So the one-handed backhand is one of the prettiest strokes in tennis. So how about we compare the techniques of Stan Wawrinka and Roger Federer? Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to compare the one-handed backhands of Stan Wawrinka and Roger Federer. Now this video footage is courtesy of 12KGP Tennis on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe to their awesome channel. I've put their link in the description below. I'm so excited to do this comparison. This was actually a request that, uh, that somebody put in the comments, so I'm happy to do it. So the first thing is the grip. Let's check out the grip that both of these players use. Now, grip systems are very easy to understand. First, let's talk about your hand. There's the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad. Those two spots need to go on a specific panel on the racket for all strokes. So let's talk about the octagon, right? So the handle of a racket is simply an octagon. There are eight panels. Well, panel number one is the very top panel, and I don't care if you're right-handed or left-handed. Panel number one is on top. So this is panel two for a right-hander, panel three, and so on. It goes all the way around to panel number eight. If you are lefty, panel number one is still the very top, but this is your panel two, panel three, right? You count to the left as a lefty. But as a one-handed backhand, the grip is actually the same whether you're right-handed or left-handed. It's the very top panel. That's called the Eastern backhand grip. Now, Stan and Roger both put their knuckle, not and their knuckle and heel pad, not smack dab in the middle of panel number one, but they actually have it slightly toward the continental side of panel number one. So panel number one but the continental side of panel number, uh, panel number one is right there, this being the continental. I would actually recommend that you just try to be right in the very center of the panel. Now, let me explain what I actually mean by this when it comes to the panel. See, the panel, and boy, is this embarrassing. Look how bad that grip is. I can't believe I actually made a video using that grip, but that's okay. So <laughs> this uh, panel, this line, right, runs all the way up the entire side of the racket. So you're going to put your base knuckle right about there and then your heel pad right about there, right? So you're going to put those two spots on the very top panel. And when you have that grip, it really gives you the best chance for success. Now, I really combed through a lot of videos and a lot of shots in order to find shots that had similar situations. You can see their hitting partner's are both hitting the ball basically at the same time. And I tried to find contact points that were at a similar height. It's not easy, you know. Um, and I tried to find shots that the ball passed over the net a similar height and that they hit the ball a similar speed. So I did my best. So <laughs> please bear with me if the situations aren't 100% the same. So let's look at the turn. And right off the bat, I'm already liking Stan's turn better. Not that Roger's doing anything wrong, but when I talk about what I like better or not as much, it's all about the viewer. It's all about you and what's easiest to copy as a recreational player. First, let's look at Stan. What I'm going to do is draw a line straight up in the air, and I'm going to use that wall up in the, I'm going to redo that. I want to get this as close to perfect as possible. There we go. So I feel like that's straight up and down, especially if we compare it to that, you know, side of the wall right there. So that's straight up and down. And now what I'm going to do is draw his racket. So it's basically right, uh, we'll say right about there. So that's the angle of his racket. So his racket is 10 degrees open. Now, when we look at Roger, you can look how open his racket is. If I draw that same line straight up, use that wall, and we look here, you can see how much more open Roger's racket is. So Roger's racket is facing more up, Stan's racket is facing more over. Right off the bat, I like it when amateur players have their racket more straight up and down. I like to tell my students, feel like you could balance a coin on the top edge of the racket. With Federer, we put a coin there, that coin's going to fall off. Where Stan, the racket's, you know, vertical enough. And the reason for this is every situation that occurs in a stroke, like every technique you use is then used to get you to the next stroke. It's kind of like Tarzan swinging from vine to vine, right? That's kind of the idea. So what we want is we want the turn to help us with the drop. And when we watch Stan, when he drops his racket, his racket is not open. 
we look at Roger, Roger's racket is open right here, where Stan's racket is basically facing right at the camera. I like Stan's position because it actually is going to help him close the racket face as he drops. One of the things I love about uh, Stan's racket here is that his racket face closes, and his racket face closes more than Fetters. Fetters is ever so slightly closed, where Stan's is more closed. The more you close your racket face, to an extent, like it's not like you want your strings to face directly toward the ground at this moment, but when your strings are slightly more closed, it makes it easier to then swing up the back of the ball for topspin. So I simply like how Stan, because his racket more is more straight up and down here, his racket's more straight up and down than more open, and actually leads to him when he drops the racket, being able to make the racket more closed. Now, one thing I want to show you with both of them is that they're both dropping the racket with the left hand on the racket. You watch most recreational players, they let go of their not with their non-hitting hand way too high. And then they start trying to make the left arm, if they're right-handed, that non-hitting arm go back as a counterweight way too early. What you want is for the non-hitting hand to go on or stay on the racket until the non-hitting hand is in front of your pocket. And you can see that. Keep the non-hitting hand on the racket until it's in front of the pocket. Really important so that you actually have a chance to stay somewhat sideways. And I'll show you this in front of the camera when I'm, when I'm done here with the analysis. Too many players, too many recreational players, and I do Zoom private lessons every week. I do about a dozen of them with people around the world. And I'm constantly doing one-handed backhand lessons. And most one-handed backhanders let go with their non-hitting hand here or they let go, let's say, about here. And you can see both of them keep their non-hitting hand with the racket or on the racket until their non-hitting hand gets in front of their left pocket. Really important that that happens so that when you swing to the ball, that's when the non-hitting hand starts to go back and it's truly a counterweight as you're hitting the ball, keeping your chest somewhat sideways, allowing you to swing out toward the target. So please think of your one-handed backhand as two-handed. It's two-handed on the way back and it's two-handed on the way down. If you can think of it that way, then it's going to be so much easier to actually have the contact and follow through be correct. Now, they both swing and you can see the, the distance away from their body. They're, they're doing what's called inside out. They're swinging away from their body. Most recreational players, they put the contact point way too close to their body, which means they're standing in the way of the ball. So don't stand in the way of the ball as if the ball's going to hit you. You want the ball to come to your side so that you can actually swing out toward the ball. That's really the key to topspin, especially when you swing with a closed racket face up and out and, and brushing up the back of the ball. Now, there's one big difference that occurs in the follow-through, and I'm going to show you by putting a line across the top. Oops, let me redraw that. There we go. A line across the top of Stan's head, and then let me actually, there we go, uh, and then a line across Roger's head. I want you to notice that when Roger is done hitting the ball, notice his right hand, his hitting hand, never goes above that yellow line. Notice that after he hits, his hand is not above the yellow line. Notice with Stan, though, his is, right? Now, you could say, well, that's because Roger's taking the ball on the rise. Well, he's really not taking the ball on the rise. That ball is peaking by the time he contacts the ball. You could say, well, you know, his contact point's a little higher than Stan's. Where Stan's was, you know, I tried my best to find contact points that were pretty close. Look, I can tell you this. Stan is actually closer to the baseline than Roger. So you would think if one of them was going to swing up more that it would be Roger because he would want to lift the ball up more in order to get that ball to have depth because the, you know, the higher you hit the ball over the net, the more depth you get on the ball. Well, Roger actually swings more across where Stan swings more up. I'm a big fan of players who swing up on their one-hander rather than across. And even though there's a slight difference between the two, Roger is like this and Stan is like this. And I can remember an interview where they, you know, I asked Roger, whose backhand do you wish you had? And he said, Stan's. You know, so look, the ball doesn't know who you are. So if you swing in a certain way, the ball's going to react a certain way. So I would actually tell you that it would be in your best interest. The grip that they use is fine. 
have your racket as vertical as you can in this position rather than having it so open. You can see Roger's racket's also higher as well. When they both drop the racket, they drop it correctly with both hands on. But I'm a fan of how much closed Stan's racket is. And then when they go up and finish, you can see how much higher the follow through is that rather than across. All right, let me actually, before I go in front of the camera, show you Dennis Shapovalov's finish because I think it's really important that you understand a certain finish that's going to help you hit your best backhands. Now, you might be looking at this and going, wait, there's no way this is Shapovalov. Shapovalov is left-handed. Well, you can see that I have reversed the video that says Welby's Wallet, Indian Wells. So this is a right-handed version. All I did is reverse it. You can see right here, 12 KGP tennis is written backward. So this is a right-handed version of Denis Shapovalov. Notice he drops the racket with both hands. There's the closed racket face I was talking about. But I want you to look at this finish. I want you to look at the left side of the letter V. This is one of the most important aspects of a one-handed backhand. Does Dennis always do this? No, not at all. But all pros in certain situations, all one-handers, use this finish. Return of serve, down-the-line passing shots when their opponent's at the net. This is actually, he's using this because the ball's on the rise. And he's actually moving forward to get this ball on the rise, and he wants maximum control. The reason the pros, if they're right-handed, will use the left side of the letter V is it keeps the wrist angle, I should say the relationship, between the, the forearm and the racket. So that relationship is shown in the wrist, it keeps it intact. See, the angle he has right here between the arm and the racket, it's the same angle. And then he just keeps that angle throughout the finish, and it's an easy way to make sure that he can hit the ball forward and time the backhand correctly. So use this finish as a way to enhance the amount of control you feel on your backhand. All right, let me show you this in front of the camera. So to help me out, I've got the Top Spin Pro. You know what to do. Check out my affiliate link in the description below. I'll even pin it in the first comment. It would mean the absolute world to me if you got a Top Spin Pro for at-home use and at-home practice using my affiliate link. So thank you so, so much. So the first thing, the grip. You know that the knuckle and the heel pad are going to go on the very top, panel number one, the Eastern backhand grip. When you take your racket back, work on having the racket very straight up and down rather than laid open. There are two reasons, basic reasons, why people have the racket way too open when they take the racket back. It's either they take the racket too high or their back elbow is down. So I want you to have your back elbow up and don't take the racket super high. Think of the racket being more head level or just slightly higher than head level. Now with this back elbow up, it's actually in your best interest to have your elbow up in the ready position. I mean, it's not called a starting position and it's not called a waiting position. What is it called? It's called a ready position. Well, what is it ready for? It's ready for the turn. And since I want my elbow up in the turn, I'm gonna have it up in the ready position, whether it's a forehand where this elbow's up or a backhand this elbow's up, get your elbows out in the ready position. You'll be shocked how that helps the turn and the subsequent parts of the swing. The job of the ready position is to help the turn be correct. The turn helps the drop be correct. The drop helps the hit be correct. Every, it's like a row of dominoes. Its job is to knock over the next domino, right? So it all has a part in hitting the stroke. So yes, the ready position, getting those elbows out is gonna make a difference. So when you turn, have the racket straight up and down or the, as close to straight up and down as possible. We saw that Vavrinka was a little bit open where Federer was about twice as much open. Get the racket as straight up and down as possible because when your racket is very straight up and down here and then you drop the racket, the racket, when it drops, will then be able to very easily close. We want the racket closed prior to hitting the ball. And at that moment, we want to keep both hands on. I watch most recreational players, they let go at the top of the drop or at the very early stages of the drop. But watch the pros. They keep their non-hitting hand on until the non-hitting hand is in front of the back leg. When you do that, then you actually have a place to move your non-hitting hand back and it can become a counterweight to keep your body sideways. 
Another benefit of keeping the non-hitting hand on the racket during the drop is you can use that non-hitting hand to help you close the racket face. Closing the racket face is a common mistake that players make because they don't close. They keep the racket very straight up and down because their brain says, well, I want it straight up and down when I hit. Why not start with it straight up and down? Well, when your racket's straight up and down as you, you know, prior to hitting during the drop, you're either gonna swing flat into the back and just smack the ball in the net, or if you do swing up, then the ball's gonna shoot way out. Because when your racket is straight up and down prior to contact, it will lead to it being open as you hit. Tilt the strings down about 45 degrees, and then your racket is straight up and down against the back of the ball. So check to see in your one-handed backhand when you go out and film yourself and you compare yourself to what the pros do. Drop the racket down with both hands, tilting the strings down with your non-hitting hand. Make sure that the strings are closed at about 45 degrees. That's gonna make it very easy for your racket to be facing forward towards your target as you spin up the back of the ball. So as you're hitting, your arms should be going apart, and you want your arms to go apart because as you throw this arm back, it actually helps accelerate your hitting arm. But it also it creates kind of a, a zero net force, so your body stays sideways. And when your body stays sideways, it helps your racket track out towards your target rather than opening up and swinging across your body. You don't wanna be facing your opponent when you're done hitting a backhand. You actually wanna stay sideways with your upper body. Now I showed you Shapovala for a specific reason, because on that backhand he finished and he kept the racket to the left of his hand. This is an incredible technique that the moment you add it to your one-handed backhand, you'll feel like you double, triple, quadruple how much control and how precise you are on the one-handed backhand. So many players, they flick the wrist or roll the racket over as they hit the ball. And even the pros need extra control in certain situations. And what you see from those players in those certain situations, return of serve, down the line passing shot, when the opponent's at the net and they've got a quick hit a ball, or like that on the rise ball with Shapovalov, you see them keep the wrist angle intact. They don't let this happen. This is what typically happens with the pros. But all pros do this in certain situations when they need extra control. And that's what I want you to do if you're on YouTube here <laughs> looking for ways to improve your one-hander, just use the left side of the letter V. And if you're a lefty, you'll use the right side of the letter V. So film yourself. I hope that you constantly are filming yourself. And if you get the Top Spin Pro, you can do it in your house. It has been raining where I live for eight straight days. <laughs> That's why I'm not on, on court recently. But you, I'm here in my basement making content for you every day, and it's because I've got the Top Spin Pro. Actually, I've got three of them. Um, so here's the idea. Elbows are out. Turn and get your grip change. <clears throat> Back elbow is up, and your racket's not open like a waiter or a waitress. The racket's gonna be straight up and down, basically of putting a coin on the edge of the racket. Drop the racket down with both hands, closing the racket face, then throw your arms apart. As you hit, keeping your chest to the side, and when you're done, rack it to the left of your hand if you're right-handed, using the left side or the appropriate side of the letter V. You compare your technique to the pros and start implementing what you just learned in this video, and there's no doubt, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.